Before the world used the term NFT, the inventors used a different word. Reeve Collins and Eric Poulier used the word VATOM, which stands for virtual atom, because they mimic the properties of items in the real world. Today, we are going to introduce you to the company VATOM, which is powering Web3 for the largest enterprises in the world, including Google, Intel, Starbucks, and more. Let's dive in. look at what your company Vadim is doing, I see the potential of what Apple did to the personal computer revolution, later the phone revolution. I look at what Adobe did to tools that made uh, graphics work so powerful on desktop computers. I look at what Salesforce did using a cloud-based system to run sales. When we study the history of technology, we find that an interface is needed for a groundbreaking revolutionary technology to reach its full potential. The internet was invented in 1969 and it took 24 years for it to reach mass adoption. In 1993, Mark Andreessen created the browser and the browser sits on top of the internet and allows entrepreneurs, builders, and users to actually use the internet without having to be a tech geek of sorts. And so Vadim is bringing this interface moment to blockchain. They are providing the tools to not only the biggest organizations and corporations in the world, but to everybody to now finally be able to use the blockchain and build on it seamlessly. Uh, my great friend and, and uh, uh, incredible futurist, uh, Peter Diamantis calls these the interface moments, the moments when the complexity of these technologies that are generally in a small niche set of users suddenly become mainstream. And they become mainstream because of two factors. One on one side is that people can create things on this confluence of technologies to make money. They actually they get motivated to do it. And the reason is because on the other side, there's an interface layer where people can consume it simply, easily, conveniently. And that's what the web did to the internet. That's what the iPhone in some ways did to mobile internet. And now we have the next great step change. Recently, Google chose Vadim to host their global annual summit for all of their employees worldwide. The platform recently collaborated with Google Cloud on the brand's first ever Beyondverse event experience, hosting 22,000 people worldwide in a customized virtual space intended to incentivize team engagement and learning. From my view, I think people are focusing on the wrong things, which is because NFTs became so powerful and successful from a, a financial point of view in the last few years, they're focused on the get-rich-quick schemes, the gambling aspects of that, and the speculative frenzy that's underway. Or because Ready Player One came out and the metaverse seemed like really exciting or Facebook changed their name to meta, they're focused on how can we make Fortnite better. But that's not really what it is. This is part of a continuum where static pages went to dynamic pages on the web, and dynamic pages went to e-commerce enabled and semantic pages, et cetera. And now we got to a point where the next great step change is, is upon us, but not in five years when we can all play ping pong in the metaverse with, with Mark Zuckerberg, if anyone wants to, you know, hold your breath, it's coming. But right now is the power of this opportunity. Right now, we're adding three things to the internet. One, identity. Today, identity is really broken on the internet. When you go from site to site, place to place, you're not yourself. You're logging into these silos, and you don't own your data. The data is owned for exploitation, sometimes against you, but certainly not in collaboration with you. So one is your identity. The next is true ownership. You don't own things within these sites. You actually have a license within a silo that if the 
website or the game dies, your goods die. That doesn't happen when you buy a hat at Yankee Stadium. You own that hat. You take it home. If the Yankees have a bad season, you still have the hat. You can wear it to Dodger Stadium if you'd like. It's a true owner, the psychology of ownership. That's the power of the NFT. And then the last piece, and perhaps the most important, is bringing the human back into the internet. The actual social layer, the way that we experience this and the way I'll remember this is not just having a great conversation with you, but it'll be where I am. The social and spatial context of this that takes a short-term memory into a long-term memory and experience. We're now adding these three things to the web, which is already pervasive throughout society. So I put together this graphic to help illustrate what's going on in the VATM Block V smart media technology ecosystem. Let's take a look. At the bottom, you'll see layer one. So those are the layer one blockchains. You can think of that as the blockchain, right? We have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Algorand. There's a vast number of layer one blockchains. On top of that, you'll see Block V. So Block V is a platform that Eric Poulier and Reeve Collins made. It sits on top of the blockchain and gives it an interface. It makes it come to life. It's a set of tools. So now anybody can easily build applications on top of blockchain. So on top of Block V, you'll see two companies, Vadim and Smart Media Technologies. So Reeve Collins started a company on top of Block V called Smart Media Technologies. Eric Poulier went and started a different company on top of Block V. And so Block V powers these two companies and these two companies are powering Web3 and they are getting adoption from the biggest corporations in the world. Some of which are listed right there on the top. You'll see Intel, Google, Verizon, Visa, Accenture, Niantic Labs, which I covered in a previous video, World Economic Forum, Starbucks, the list goes on and on. And in the future, I will be covering each one of these integrations separately. But I hope this illustration kind of helps everybody grasp the ecosystem and how the different layers work together. To recognize that this is not a phenomenon to study because it may become interesting to you in five years when it matures. It's a phenomenon that is upon us now and that will leave you behind if you're not on that train. And the reason is because each of these elements that you saw maturing over the last few years have matured not only significantly to be ready independently, but to converge on something simple enough to be consumed and used in education and healthcare and government and marketing and advertising and entertainment. Everywhere the web made a difference. And these things are such things as augmented reality, virtual reality, 5G networks, edge networks, the ability to actually have a blockchain that you can have an independent observer and authenticity of something. And couple all of that together with tokenization and the ability to do spatial sound and next generation human engagements within these environments, you suddenly have a, a, a moment where instead of saying, wow, this is all complex and interesting that I'll watch, somebody's just gonna hand you a virtual cup of coffee and you're gonna be like, oh, thanks, I'll take it to Starbucks. And that all converges in one place, right? An augmented reality coffee I can put on the table. It's in one place at one time, you can pick it up. It can change state. It can change by the weather or sports scores into something else and you can now redeem it. It's gamified, it connects you to someone else. And that simple cup of coffee is gonna represent a sea change in how we see human engagement for the next generation of the web. Today, I have introduced you to Vadim. And on our next episode, we will dive a little bit deeper into specific integrations that Vadim has with Fortune 100 companies. See you next time.